At the Minnesota State Capitol, some progress in the special session. Last night, the Minnesota has pa House passed the Legacy, Agriculture, and Higher Education budget bills. Lawmakers need to pass more budget bills before the end of the month, or the government will shut down. Last week, House Republicans launched a long filibuster that black blocked bills passage because they were unhappy about not being included in budget negotiations. Democratic House Speaker Melissa Hortman called the move by House Republicans obstructionist. A short time ago, I spoke with the leader of the Republican House minority, Kurt Dowd. Take a look. Well, joining us right now, Minority Leader Representative Kurt Dowd, thank you so much for coming on. Well, good morning, Esme. Thanks for having me on. All right, 10 days left until July 1st. Are you going to filibuster the remaining budget bills, which are the big ones this week? You know, we are not, and, and, and people are saying that, that we're filibustering. Uh, there are some important issues that we think are missing from these bills, uh, but most importantly, uh, everyone was missing from the agreement uh, on these bills. Uh, we were not included, and uh, frankly, uh, things like reinsurance that are on the chopping block right now uh, would be incredibly damaging to Minnesotans. So uh, we're fighting really hard to make sure that 165,000 Minnesotans don't see a 30% increase uh, in their health insurance rates. And, and we think that's something worth fighting for. We will make sure that the bills get passed and get done uh, on time and we get out of here. Uh, but in the meantime, we want to make sure that we're all doing what's right for Minnesotans. Well, let me ask you this. Clearly, you've been able to slow down the process because of your objections. Are we going to go to a shutdown? I, I don't think so. Um, the reality is, uh, while we have been thoroughly vetting the bills that have been on the House floor thus far, uh, the bills that, ha that we have seen are only about 7% of the state budget. Well, the that's, that's pieces, why I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> the big pieces like, like education and health and human services uh, are not finalized yet, and, and not, those bills aren't even written yet. I believe that those agreements will get done from what I'm hearing. Uh, I think we're not far apart in some of those areas. Um, so I'm confident that we will get done, but there's a lot of work uh, yet to do to make sure we're doing the right things as well. All right. Everyone says that if there is a shutdown this year, it'll be far worse than in past years. Exactly what would it look like? Can, can you tell us? Because I haven't gotten a lot of details on that. Well, I, I'm not sure anybody really knows. Uh, at this point, there was a Supreme Court decision a few years ago uh, that said that the, the uh, judicial branch cannot appropriate money, that that role is reserved for the legislative branch. Uh, meaning, uh, if there is a shutdown, they can't declare that some services are emergency services. I have a feeling that a court would still probably interpret that uh, Supreme Court ruling differently. Um, and I'm sure that if we got to the point where we were on the brink of a shutdown, that legislators and the governor would step in and say, well, let's put in place a, a temporary stopgap funding for at least 30 days or something like that to make sure that we didn't, uh, you know, close down our, our prisons and, and roll, uh, uh, roll uh, wheelchairs out of nursing homes into the streets. Uh, those are things that just can't happen, frankly. Um, you know, in past weeks, we have had as guests on our show people who have represented the DFL perspective on police reform. You have a specific proposal that you put out there that's different. Tell us about that proposal and why you feel it could lead to some positive changes. Well, we feel uh, that we need to, to uh, provide some resources uh, for additional uh, officers. We think that the state patrol uh, should be allowed to step in in cases uh, where the cities are in need of some additional law enforcement officers. In, um, like so for in instance, in Minneapolis. Correct. Yes, correct. Uh, and, and also in St. Paul, if it came to that, um, we believe that there should be some uh, additional money provided for a shot spotter and uh, those sorts of things. We've had two nights in a row now where there's been gunshots right outside of the Capitol, and we've encouraged our members uh, to travel back and forth between the Capitol and their office building through the tunnel uh, because the streets aren't really safe. Uh, we've had a 300% increase in carjackings in the city of Minneapolis year over year. Uh, murders are up 100% in the first five months of this month compared to that same time last year. Uh, crime has spiked, and, and Democrats seem insistent on still wanting to defund law enforcement. And we believe that if you have more officers on the streets uh, in the communities, that our communities will be safer. Um, and that's what we're proposing. Are you saying that Minneapolis is not safe right now? Well, I, you know, I think Minneapolis is not as safe as it could be. They're down about 200 officers right now from where they, they could be and, sh and frankly should be and where they've uh, in the past been. And, and I know they're having trouble finding officers to fill those positions, and it's going to take some time to, to fill them back up. Um, a lot of those vacancies are as a result of 
uh, the riots that happened last year. So what we need to do is support our law enforcement, give them the funding they need and the verbal support from Minnesota's leaders um, so that our communities have trust in our law enforcement. That's what's really important. Okay, well, uh, Minority Leader Kurt Dowd, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, always a pleasure. Thank you. Good morning, Esme. Good morning.